And he's actually started with a year that he wasn't even born in at number five. Even Stevie wasn't born. Even Stevie wasn't born, which is saying something. Say a lot, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a 58, and uh, the first time that France uh, reached uh, the, uh, the semi-final with Jus Fontaine, Raymond Coppa as well, who uh, used to play for Real Madrid, and that was absolutely fantastic. They lost against Brazil, who won the World Cup. Pelé winning his first World Cup at the age of eight, uh, 17. But, yeah, we had a great game, and Jus Fontaine scored 13 goals during the, the World Competition. And I think wow. it's still the record. 13 goals in six matches. In six matches, yeah. Yeah, that was a different football, I have to say. You know, but that was great for France. And, uh, and uh, that, they, they, they are legends. We call the Copa the generation. After you have the Platinum generation, then the Zidane generation. I don't know how do we call the 2018 generation. Maybe the Mbappe generation. Okay. In we'll a number see. four, Euro 2000. Yeah, because we confirmed uh, that we were a very good team winning the 98 and then uh, the Euro. It's always tougher to win a, a Euro than a World Cup for me. And uh, we were very fortunate because I think Alessandro Del Piero ex accepted to, uh, to be teased about that, that uh, Italy were a better side that final, but Trezeguet made that fantastic golden goal and we, we won. We Did won. you like the golden goal rule? I loved it because we won in 98 <laughs> with Laurent Blanc against uh, Paraguay yeah. and then we won that... Uh, that uh, well, you will do if you win. Yeah, of course, you always like it when you win. So. Uh, but, but where there's a will, Todd, there's a way as well. Scoring at the death to even send it to... That was crazy. Time. That yeah. was intense. That was crazy. And, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't play that final, but uh, but we were all jumping on the on the bench. That was, that was great. That was, uh, Nice stuff to see. Okay, we're going way back, and you picked Euro 1984, which I think is one that you could have been at but missed. Uh, yeah, that, that was crazy. <laughs> that guy was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that missed the semi final against this Portugal was a, because of the date. That was the only time, only competition that Platini played without injury, and this has been fantastic. He scored nine goals in five games. Two uh, at tricks against Yugoslavia, I would say, and I forgot the other one. He was he was the cream on the top of that team, though. But he had so many good players. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best team you've ever had. Oh yes, for me, for, for to, sure. I'd always say that. And to watch, it was exciting to watch. He scored great goals. He was unbelievable. Yeah. But the team as a whole was. No, no, no. Who they, was my favorite? My favorite was a right back. What was his name again? Uh, you have uh, Batista, you have for Marseille. Oh, Amoros. Amoros. Manuel Amoros. Oh, yeah, yeah. Loved him. He was named best player in the competition in 86. Number two, regarded as one of the best football matches of all time. Yeah, that was a, that, that was a real nightmare. I was in, uh, in Germany, you know, when you do exchange with school, and I was in a, in a family, and we were leading 3 1, and uh, the family kicked me out. <laughs> and they were upset, and that's the, the game. Change, you know, I would say changing where Batisto is hit by Schumacher, lost teeth, lost conscious, and we lost in penalties. Uh, GJ6 and I think uh, Batisto, uh, no, um, uh, Bossis missed the penalty, mm. and uh, that was awful. Everybody remembers 82. Uh, Alain Gires, one of the top players, says Aye. that he still sometimes have nightmares at night okay. when, he, when he sleeps about that game. That was, a, that was crazy. And that, when, we win, when we won two, in 88, 98, we were leading 2-0. Marcel de Sey got red carded. We said, we don't want to do that. Yeah, right. and, and we thought about that. Well, I thought. And that's the, yeah, the top of the top because the first time that was in France against the best team in the world, Brazil. And when Zizou dec decided to declare that he was the best player in the world, especially in that final, and that's, that's great. I had the chance to play that final because Laurent Blanc was red carded and I played and I had to mark Ronaldo. And, uh, you know, that's a bold head. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's, I that's a bold sheet. head. Well, yes, yes, but, yes. But on the pitch, are you looking at Zidane thinking, oh, wow, or are you just so focused on the fact that you're in a World Cup final? No, I was focused on Ronaldo. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? You know, I want to make sure. Now, even when we that had the ball, job. I was looking at him and saying, where is he? Because when we lose the ball, if he's too far away, I'm dead. So, and you had Rivaldo, you had Bebeto as well. So it's not like he was on his own. Mm. Uh, it was a fantastic team. And for, it would have been more difficult for us to win, to, uh, to play against the Netherlands. They lost in semi-final in penalties, I think, against Brazil. But they were a much better team. We were happy to play Brazil in final, I have to say. Well, with all due respect, of course. Uh, Jan, looking on, what did you make of Frank's list? Did you like it? Oh, I like it. This is, uh, this is a beauty. This is a romance of football. And that's uh, that the game in 82. I was 15. I remember it as it was yesterday. I remember it was 1-1 in the 90th minutes. Then 92, 98, 3-1 France. And then uh, Romanigue came. And 
And the, I remember the, the, the long cross to Rubisch, who headed it back to Klaus True. Fischer, who mm. did his speciality. That was his overhead kick. I make it 3 3. And mm. if you see on that picture, Uli Stielik, he was crying like a baby. Yeah. He missed the penalty. And West Germany seemed to go out. And then Bozins uh, from Nantes, I guess, uh, got it. But I mean, he's also remembered for, for uh, Schumacher, Tony Schumacher. Killing Batisto. It's uh, not killing in, 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 in metaphor, uh, to, to, to be clear. But it was an unbelievable game. And, and if, if I'm not wrong, Frank, I remember also 78 World Cup. Although France didn't go past the group stage in Argentina, mm -hmm. we noticed there was something going on in France football. That, that was the first time I kind of saw that uh, uh, artistry, that entertainment kind of game. And they were in a very difficult group, I remember, in that World Cup. That was the Platini, Platini generation. Michel Platini said that he went to Argentina to learn about the World Cup, but to yeah. enjoy the time, not to win it. And they played a game against Argentina and Mario Kempes. Uh, yes. For me, it became a legend. You know, it was... <laughs> yeah. oh, it was, uh, it was beautiful. It was uh, scoring goals and uh, and everything. And they played against Italy as well. And uh, and they played the last game against Hungary without the shirt of the national team because they forgot it. So they played in, with the, the local <laughs> team shirt in white and, re and and green. That was crazy. It was um, <laughs> insulting our country, whatever. Yeah. But that was the, the first experience of the new generation. And I agree with Stevie. For me, even if we won 98 and 2000, the best generation ever in France was the Platini generation. Uh, but speaking yeah. of generations, where's 2018? Uh, well, I had to choose five. There would have been six, I would say. Uh, it wasn't a fantastic World Cup. They did well, but it was in Russia. Didn't, I think Croatia were much better. We scored the two first goals. I think it wasn't a free kick. It wasn't a penalty. Um, when they played against Argentina, I mean, it was that. It wasn't perfect. <coughs> that, so that it's why I say that. That team didn't have the flair of the other team. Hang on a minute. This team that won team the World didn't. Cup, so Frank's like, you know what? Our World but Cup win was better. I'm not it, it didn't, that team didn't have the flair. <laughs> no, that's not like there's that. A, there's a big difference. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> no, no, but it's, uh, it would have been perfect. I would have said, yes, it would have, they would have been put in the first spot. But really, it wasn't that good. It wasn't, it wasn't a perfect World Cup for any teams, I would say. I didn't see big games. Uh, when they played against Belgium, they won. But Belgium didn't play the good game as well. So it wasn't... It, it was... <laughs> They, I don't know, for, for, they won from the back door, let's say, and then because maybe of the mm -hmm. referee in the final as well. So, uh, What huh. about France 2022? Well, it's possible. And you know, I like it because in, during the, before the Euro, and it's always worked like that with the national team, when it, everything goes well, you can be prepared for disaster in the middle <laughs> of the competition, like in 2002. Uh, but it's, they seem to struggle, and I like that. We struggled in 98. That team struggled, uh, the Platini generation struggled before 84. Everybody was saying that they're not good enough. They won it. 98, the same thing. 2018, it wasn't that good as well before, and they won it. So I want to believe that's a good sign that nothing goes right about right now. So. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.